In this lesson, we are going to learn the principle of mathematical induction. In our previous video lectures, we have learned how to prove statements of this form for all natural numbers n, p of n. We have learned to prove it using direct proof, proof by contrapositive, and proof by contradiction. In this lesson, we will prove such statements using proof by mathematical induction. Let us recall the well-ordering principle. Every non-empty subset of the set of non-negative integers has a least element. We have learned this from our previous video lectures. Notice that the least element here must be unique. Let us see why that is so. We are only proving the uniqueness part here. So first, let us start with a non-empty subset of the set of non-negative integers. Let S be a non-empty subset of the set of non-negative integers. How do we prove uniqueness? We will get two such elements and we will show in the end that they must be the same. Since M1 is a least element and M2 is an element of S, we must have that m1 must be less than or equal to m2. However, m2 is also a least element of s. We must also have that m2 must be less than or equal to m1. So therefore, we now have that m1 must be equal to m2. That concludes our proof. Here is the principle of mathematical induction. Suppose we have an open sentence, P of n, where the domain of n is a set of natural numbers. Suppose that P of 1 is true. And second, for all natural numbers k, this implication P of k implies P of k plus 1 is true. If these two statements are true, then P of n must be true for all all natural numbers n. Take note what is it that we want to show here. We want to show that p of n is true for any natural number n. That is, we want to show that p of 1, p of 2, p of 3, and so on are all true. The principle of mathematical induction states that you have to first start with 1. 1 is the least element of the set of natural numbers. You have to start by showing that P of 1 is true. And then the second part says that once you already have climbed the first step on your ladder, then the second step on your ladder must also be true. P of 1 is true then. P of 2 must also be true, since P of 2 is true, P of 3 must also be true, and so on and so forth. So, it is very important that you have to start with P of 1. And then this second part here tells you that you can now climb your ladder infinitely. That, that is how the principle of mathematical induction works. You call this part here your base case when n is equal to 1. And then the second part here, you call this your inductive step. Here are the steps in proving something by induction. You have to first clearly identify what your P of n is. Once you have identified that, you will now proceed with your base case. That is, you need to verify that P of 1 must be true. Next, for the inductive step, you just have to prove this implication. P of k implies P of k plus 1 for any natural number k. And lastly, for your conclusion, you have now shown that P of n must be true for any natural number n. Take a look at our inductive step here. We are proving a quantified statement for any natural number k. P of k implies P of k plus 1. So therefore, since you have for any natural number k here, you have let k be a natural number and you are proving this implication. So therefore, you suppose p of k is true and then show that p of k plus 1 must also be 
true. So this is how your inductive step looks like. Notice here that I used k instead of n here just to just for you to be aware that you are on the inductive step. Moreover, I want to emphasize that we are not assuming our conclusion here. Remember that our desired conclusion is that p of n must be true for any natural number k. For the inductive step, we are just proving this implication. We are not assuming that p of n is already true because remember that it is wrong to assume your conclusion. For our first example, we want to show that for any natural number n, n plus 3 is less than 5n squared. Let us use the steps that I showed you earlier. So first, we have to identify what our p of n is. Of course, our p of n is the open sentence n plus 3 less than 5n squared. Next, we have to verify our base case. For n equals 1, what is that? We have 1 plus 3 less than 5 times 1 squared. And this is true. Next, for our inductive step, we will follow this format. Let k be a natural number and suppose p of k. What is our p of k? Our p of k is k plus 3 is less than 5k squared. What is it that we want to show? We want to show that p of k plus 1 is true. What is p of k plus 1? That's k plus 4 less than 5k plus 1 squared. This is what we want to show. In proving equalities or inequalities, remember that you cannot manipulate this. You have to start with one side and end up with the other side. So let us first start with the left-hand side, k plus 4. Remember that in proving p of k plus 1, you have to make use of your inductive hypothesis. Your inductive hypothesis is your assumption that p of k is true. This is your inductive hypothesis. How will we make use of k plus 3 less than 5k squared? We need to have an expression involving k plus 3. And k plus 4 can be written as k plus 3 plus 1. And by the inductive hypothesis, k plus 3 is less than 5k squared. And then I still have... A 1 here. How will we end up with 5 times quantity k plus 1 squared? For our scratch, what is this? This is 5k squared plus 10k plus 5. How will we end up with this one? 1 is less than 5. So I'll have plus 5 here. And if I add 10k, this is still greater than this expression because k is a natural number. And therefore, this is now equal to 5 times k plus 1 squared. So therefore, we have now shown that k plus 4 is less than 5 times quantity k plus 1 squared. So therefore, n plus 3 must be less than 5n squared for all natural numbers n. Now, this is not the formal proof. I just showed you this so that you will know how the formal proof will look like. Now, typically, a statement to be proved by induction is not presented in terms of P of N or some other symbols. I just showed P of N to you just so that you will have a grasp of how proof by induction looks like. First, you say we proceed by mathematical induction. It's a good practice to always notify your reader what strategy you are going to use to prove something. And then for our base case here, since 1 plus 3 is less than 5 times 1 squared, the statement is true for n is equal to 1. And then next, I have my inductive step here. Let k be a natural number and suppose that k plus 3 is less than 5k squared. This is our inductive hypothesis. We want to show that p of k plus 1 is true, this one. 
And then by the inductive hypothesis, k plus 4 is equal to k plus 3 plus 1 less than 5k squared plus 1. And since k is a natural number, so therefore this expression is less than 5 times quantity k plus 1 squared. Hence, k plus 4 is less than 5 times quantity k plus 1 squared. This is your conclusion part by the principle of mathematical induction, n plus 3 is less than 5n squared for every natural number n. Take note that it can be helpful to point out to the reader of your proofs where you use your inductive hypothesis. I did that here by the inductive hypothesis, k plus 3 is less than 5k squared here, so that your reader will know that you really used your inductive hypothesis. With practice, you will become better at seeing how p of k and p of k plus 1 are related. Because remember that when you are proving that p of k plus 1 is true, you have to make use of your inductive hypothesis, p of k. Here is another example using PMI. Let a and b be integers. Show that for any natural number n, a minus b divides a raised to the n minus b to the n. For our proof, we have to copy our hypothesis here that a and b are integers. And then we proceed by induction. What is our p of n here? This part, a minus b divides a raised to n minus b raised to n. I will not write that in the proof. For our base case, we have to show that this is true when n is equal to 1. Since a minus b divides itself, Statement is true when n is equal to 1. Next, for our inductive step, we always start with let k be a natural number and suppose that p of k is true. a minus b divides a raised to k minus b raised to the k. That is, a k minus b k can be written as a minus b times an integer r. What is it that we want to show here? We want to show p of k plus 1 is true. What is p of k plus 1? a minus b divides a raised to k plus 1 minus b raised to k plus 1. Let us first consider our expression a k plus 1 minus b k plus 1. We want to end up with a minus b times an integer here. Moreover, we have to make use of the fact, let me just write this as scratch, we have to make use of the fact that a k minus b k is equal to a minus b times r. This is our inductive hypothesis. I want to end up with a raised to k minus b raised to the k. So first, I will write a raised to k plus 1 minus b raised to k plus 1 as a times a to the k minus b times b to the k. Next, I want to end up with a k minus b k. So therefore, I want to force it here. I have an a times a to the k here. So therefore, this is a times a to the k minus a times b to the k. So that is the missing link here. So we will now subtract a times b to the k. But of course, we also have to add that to make sure that we are not changing our original expression. This two terms is equal to this. And this one has a common factor of b to the k, and I have my a minus b. And since I already have my expression a raised to k minus b raised to k here, by our inductive hypothesis, this is a times a minus b times r. Then I have b k times a minus b. And notice now that we have our common factor of a minus b. And we have now just arrived at our goal. Let me now erase this. So this is now a minus b times a r plus 
b to the k. Since a, r, and b are integers, a, r plus b raised to the k is an integer. So thus, a minus b divides a raised to k plus 1 minus b raised to k plus 1. So that concludes our inductive step. And then for our conclusion, a minus b divides a to the n minus b to the n for any natural number n. That concludes our proof. For our next examples, we will be using the summation notation. So first, let us recall what that means. The notation summation of f of i, i from 1 to n, simply means you are evaluating the function for each i running from 1 to n and then adding all of them. Notice that the summation of f of i from 1 to n plus 1 is equal to this expression, f of 1 plus f of 2 until f of n plus f of n plus 1 because it ends at n plus 1 here. However, this part here is your summation of f of i, i from 1 to n and then here I just copied f of n plus 1. So take note that this is the relationship between the summation of f of i from 1 to n plus 1 and the summation of f of i from 1 to n. Let us prove that for every positive integer n, the summation of i from 1 to n is equal to n times n plus 1 all over 2. Let us prove this using PMI. What is our P of n here? It is this statement. For our base case, when n is equal to 1, we have this is just 1. And is this equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2? Yes, that takes care of your base case. Next, for our inductive step, let k be a natural number and suppose that p of k is true. What is our p of k? Summation of i from 1 to k. This is equal to k times k plus 1 all over 2. We want to show that p of k plus 1 is true. We will be replacing k here by k plus 1. So therefore, the right hand side will be k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. Since we want to prove this equality, we just have to start with one side. Let us start with the left hand side, of course, because we want to simplify this into this expression. We want to make use of the inductive hypothesis, so therefore, we write this as the summation i from 1 to k first, and then for the last term, that is just k plus 1. Because this means, this one means 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to k plus k plus 1. And this part here is your summation of i from 1 to k. And then I just copied my k plus 1. By our inductive hypothesis, this summation is equal to k times k plus 1 all over 2. And then I will add k plus 1. When we simplify this expression, we get k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2, which is equal to k squared plus 3k plus 2, all over 2. And that is exactly your k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. So we have just shown that the statement is true for k plus 1. So therefore, for our conclusion, therefore, p of n must be true. That concludes our proof. Here's another example involving the summation notation. Prove that for every positive integer n, the summation of i squared i from 1 to n is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Again, this is our p of n, so let us first verify that this is true when n is equal to 1. 
When n is equal to 1, summation of i squared i from 1 to 1 is just 1 squared. Is this equal to 1 times 1 plus 1? 2 times 1 plus 1 all over 6? Yes, this is true. So we say that since this is true, the statement is true when n is equal to 1. For our inductive step, let k be a natural number and suppose that this summation, this is p of k, so that's why I have k here. This is equal to k, k plus 1 to k plus 1 all over 6. Again, we want to show that p of k plus 1 is true. So that summation of i squared, i from 1 to k plus 1, this should be equal to, we will replace all k's here by k plus 1. So this becomes k plus 1, k plus 2, and then my 2k plus 1 will become 2k plus 3. Again, we will start from the left hand side. This summation i squared i from 1 to k plus 1 is just the summation of i squared up to k. It's just that we have an extra term and that extra term is for k plus 1. So this is k plus 1 squared. By our inductive hypothesis, this expression is equal to k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 all over 6 plus k plus 1 squared. I will just write here by our inductive hypothesis. And when you simplify this expression, you will get 2k cubed plus 9k squared plus 13k plus 6 all over 6. When you expand this, this expansion is also equal to this one. You can just copy that. And for our conclusion, we now have that the summation of i squared i from 1 to n is equal to n times n plus 1 to n plus 1 over 6 for any natural number n. Next, we are going to recall this product notation. So we are using this symbol. So th this corresponds to your summation notation, except that in this case, we are now multiplying our f of i's where i runs from 1 to n. So just like with our summation notation, the product of f of i's, i from 1 to n plus 1, is just equal to the products of your f of i's, i from 1 to n, this part. But you just have an extra factor of f times n plus 1. That is your last term over here. We will make use of this in using our inductive hypothesis when we are proving by induction. Let us also recall our factorial notation. For a positive integer n, we define n factorial as the product of n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 until 1. And we define 0 factorial as 1. Take note that using our product notation, this can be written as the product of i's, i's from 1 to n, correct? This is 1 times 2 times 3 up to n. Let us prove this formula. For every positive integer n, the product of 2i minus 1, i from 1 to n, is equal to this expression. For our proof, we always start with, we proceed by induction, and we will verify that this is true when i is equal to 1. What is this? When i is equal to 1, we only have one factor because i goes from 1 to 1. So that's 2 times 1 minus 1. And this is 2 times 1 factorial all over 2 raised to 1 times 1 
factorial. The left hand side is 1. And this is 2 factorial all over 2, which is also equal to 1. For our inductive step, we always have let k be a natural number and suppose your p of k. This goes from 1 to k. This is equal to 2k factorial all over 2 raised to k times k factorial. We want to show that this product, if you add one more term, so that becomes i from 1 to k plus 1. This is now equal to replace k by k plus 1, so that is 2k plus 2 factorial all over 2 raised to k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial. Again, we just write this product notation i from 1 to k plus 1 as the product until k so that we can make use of our inductive hypothesis times the last term. And what is the last term here? That is 2 times quantity k plus 1 minus 1. So that's 2k plus 1. By our inductive hypothesis, this expression is equal to 2k factorial all over 2 raised to k times k factorial. I have here my scratch. It is not part of your proof. Recall that we want to end up with 2k plus 2 factorial, 2 to the k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial. What I will do is to show that this expression is also equal to this expression and then work my way forwards from there. I want to end up with 2k factorial. I have 2k plus 2 factorial here, so I will write this as 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1, and then I'm going down. That's 2k and so on, so that's my 2k factorial. I want to have a 2 raised to the k, so I will write 2 to the k plus 1 as 2 times 2 to the k, so that I have my 2 to the k here. Similarly, I want to have a k factorial here and I can get that from this expression, k plus 1 factorial. So I will write this as k plus 1 times k factorial, correct? Because this is k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 and so on and that is exactly your k factorial. Notice that I already have my 2k factorial, my 2 to the k and my k factorial. I also have my 2 to the k plus 1 here. And look at this. 2k plus 2 and then 2 times quantity k plus 1. This will really cancel. So therefore, this expression is equal to this expression. So therefore, how will we proceed from here? We will now multiply 2 times k plus 1 on both numerator and denominator. So I will now rewrite this as 2k plus 2. Then here, so that the reader can see that we just multiplied 2k plus 2 all over 2k plus 1. And then I will write 2k plus 1 here. And my 2k factorial. Then I will now copy the denominator, which is 2 to the k times k factorial. And therefore, the numerator is now equal to your 2k plus 2 factorial all over, this is 2 raised to k plus 1, that's my 2 times 2 to the k, and then k plus 1 times k factorial, that is my k plus 1 factorial. And this is exactly what we want to show. So therefore, for our conclusion, this product is equal to this expression.
For this example here, I will leave it to you as an exercise. I will end this lesson by giving a proof of the mathematical induction. I showed you that this is true by giving you a diagram, but let us see why this really works. Take note here that we are proving an implication and this is our premise. Suppose that these two are true. This is our premise and this is what we want to show, our conclusion. P of n is true for all natural numbers n. So thus we start by suppose that 1 and 2 hold. We want to show that p of n is true for all natural numbers n. Suppose on the contrary that this quantified statement is not true. What is the negation of a quantified statement involving the universal quantifier? There exists an n such that p of n is false. We now collect all natural numbers for which the open statement is false. So that's why I have here the set of all natural numbers for which p of m is false. We know that this is not empty because our assumption here is that there exists at least one. Since s is non-empty and it is a subset of the set of natural numbers. It must have a least element. And this is true by the well-ordering principle. Let us call this least element small s. And we know that this small s is unique. So that's why I am now using the article the instead of a. What can we say about this small s here? Since p of 1 is true, because that is condition 1, p of 1 is true. That means that 1 is not in S, capital S. Hence, small s should be greater than or equal to 2. Since small s is greater than or equal to 2, small s minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. And of course, it has to be a natural number because S is a natural number. What can we say about P of small s minus 1? Is this true or false? This must be true because S is the least element of S. We do not know what your big set S looks like, but this is the last element here of big S. So therefore, S minus 1 must not be in S. What does it mean if P of S minus 1 is true? Well, from our condition 2, if you know that step S minus 1 is true, P of S minus 1 is true, by condition 2, if P of S minus 1 is true, then p of small s must also be true. And this is now a contradiction. Why is that? This contradicts the fact that small s is in capital S. And what does it mean for you to be in S? The statement is false there. Since we have arrived at the contradiction, our initial assumption that this is true must be false. That concludes your proof.